Alright, welcome back everyone. And apparently my voice is doing strange things to me. Um, to our continuing tutorial on uh, C++ and this one's actually going to be about good style. Um, let me just delete all this. I was helping somebody on Yahoo Answers uh, with a C++ question. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about good style and what exactly good style means. Um, it was actually a question in regards to something I had said on, uh, I believe it was lesson eight, where I just mentioned it briefly in saying that, you know, having scope brackets um, around an if statement is good style. And I actually covered why last lesson, but I wanted to show you guys some more things that are just good style that you don't necessarily have to do. Um, example, you really don't have to have one statement per line. I mean, if you want, you can execute the entire program and have it just basically be on one line. Um, I think that there is an exception to that. I think int main has to be on its own line. Um, but really, other than that, you can just put everything on one line. See out, hello world. Um, and then, no, I guess I can't declare variables on the same line, but you can, you can put an awful, awful, awful lot of stuff on one line. And the only downside is you're going to suffer issues of readability. Um, and so typically if I, I like doing uh, a few things, if I'm going to use an if statement, say I'll just do um, an if statement that will always return true here. We can do one equals one. Hell, we can actually do if true, which is always going to uh, evaluate to true. I can just say see out um, hello world. Because I'm, I just woke up, I don't really have too many clever things to say at this hour. You'll notice that when I use my scoping brackets, I have them immediately after the if uh, on the same line. And the reason you'll, you can actually put them on the next line if that's easier for you. Some people think it's easier to see like that. But when you end up with a really long program, let's say you do something like this. Um, hello, uh, YouTube. I'm channeling uh, Ronald Junkies there. You know, if you end up with a few statements like this, and then maybe you have a while, true, um, and whatever I say there is going to be an endless loop, so I'm just going to make it a break statement. Um, maybe I'll just say C out, one, two, three, four. But you see how it just makes the file look bigger? You know, because we've, at this point, we've used three lines that have nothing on them except brackets. So for the uh, idea of getting sort of as much information as we can into a small space, we kind of want to keep it so it's a little bit more compact. And I feel as though, you know, once you see certain statements, if you see if, or if you see for, or if you see while, or later on you're going to see um, switch and case and uh, things of that nature. Later on we'll be probably playing with vectors and maybe sets and multi-sets and other types of containers. Whenever you have something that needs to be filled or has some type of scope, you usually put the scope operator on the same line. Um, aside from that, um, well, I've mentioned that we tend to use um, certain variables like int i. That's almost always going to be used as a counter. Um, you can give your counters more interesting names. Um, when we get up to working in arrays, you're going to see a lot of people name them uh, row and call. I don't know why, but my mind 
does not work with row and column when we do two-dimensional arrays. For some reason, it, it just does not work right for me. I have to do X and Y because, you know, I'm, I'm a math person. I've done a lot of math, and ever since uh, maybe ninth grade, I've been taught, you know, the Cartesian plane. This is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. It doesn't feel right calling them rows and columns, even if I'm thinking about it in Microsoft Excel spreadsheet terms. So um, we're probably going to cover arrays in about another 15, 20 chapters. So don't get too excited about that yet, just because I'm a little concerned about array notation. Um, we're going to cover case structure starting very, very, very soon. And what case structure is, I'm just going to show you a quick example. Um, it's very useful for menus. Um, so let's say C out, and we're going to make an int called choice. And we'll just initialize it to zero, because initializing variables is just, it's good form. There will be times when maybe you have an if statement to set something. And for some reason, the if statement doesn't trigger, and then you get a compiler error saying, you know, this didn't compile right uh, because this variable never gets used. And so that's kind of one of those things that you need to look out for. So we're going to say um, enter one for uh, hello world, enter two for. I don't know, let's say, um, hello YouTube, enter three, two, break. And in a case, what you actually do, or well, I need to see in first. And again, we're still not verifying that what the person says is what we want. We're probably going to jump into that around lesson 20. Um, but in a simple case, you're going to do this. You're going to do switch, choice, and then you're going to do case one, more brackets, see out, hello world, and case two, uh, hello, you, oh, no, I totally botched that one. Me trying to use uh, case as a C out. YouTube. Okay. Um, and each of these needs a backslash n before it because I didn't use an end l or anything above. Um, and so that's just going to. Oh, big thing that I forgot about that. Each of these needs a break. If you don't put in a break, they'll all execute. It's known as case fall through. Case three. And just break. And then you're supposed to have a default case. We really don't need to, but default in this case is going to be break as well. And now what that's going to do is it's going to ask us a number, and whatever number we use, it's... I guess you forgot their C out. Um, whatever number we choose, it's going to be used in that. These are really useful in menus and things that you're going to reuse a bunch of times. And apparently I didn't click on here first, even though I did. So, okay, that's the basic structure and idea of a case. Those are going to be uh, very style-driven for us. Um, I want to check how I'm doing on time real quick. Um, and apparently my camera's hidden on me. Uh, we're at about 10 minutes. Okay, um, I just want to cover a couple more things really quickly. Um, in the future, we're going to be using uh, Boolean flags a bit more, and I don't feel like I covered those particularly well, um, especially because I was calling them Booleans rather than Bools, which is what they are in this. I got my Java and C++ a little confused. So let's call this is used uh, one and is used two. We're going to set each of these equal to false. And 
think that I just had company arrive, so um, I'm going to do this really quick. We're going to do while uh, true, so that's just going to execute infinitely. Uh, see out. Um, we'll say choose a number one or two. So pretty straightforward. Um, C in. No, I called it choice. And so when they select one or two, what we're going to do is if choice equals one is used one equals true. And then that's going to be it. And then uh, else if choice equals uh, technically we don't need an else if because the only other choice well technically they could enter something that's not one or two we're still not quite where we need to be to check for that oh and that's a double equal there I'm still half asleep so you'll have to pardon me um, we're going to skip the choice equals to um, and just leave it as an else, because at this point, if they enter something other than two, we're going to have some issues anyways. So we'll say is used to equals true. Then we can check right here as a condition to end our loop. We can say if used, if, if used uh, one equals true, and if used two equals true and then we're just going to break Hi. and that's everything hey um and that's going to wrap it up for now all right later <laughs>